Time for Focus, and today we're heading to Lebanon, where there's still a waste crisis. Earlier this year, Human Rights Watch launched a campaign calling for an end to the crisis, saying it poses serious health risks for the country's residents. It started in 2015, when a big landfill site closed, and officials failed to implement a contingency plan in time to replace it. Julie Dungaloff and James Vecina report. It's not exactly a busy day at the Burj Hamoud auction. This fish for $45. Okay, $40. We're just a few kilometers east of Beirut. In this small harbor, fishermen are having to deal with the polluted and unsightly scene. This mountain of rubbish is one of the country's two waste dumps. It was opened by the government in 2016 and is already full. Look at all the rubbish that gets caught in our nets. Why are these boots in the sea? We fished this from waters about 70 or 80 meters deep. The dump is overflowing into the sea, forcing fish to swim away from the coast and making fishing operations more expensive. Emil Aids is the head of a local business, and he's filed a complaint in order to obtain official recognition of the impact that it has on his work. The seabed has been coated with plastic and waste, and it has affected our profession a lot. I used to earn 400 to 500 dollars a week. Now it's about 50, 60, maybe 100 dollars when things go well. And some fishermen were even forced to change jobs to make ends meet. The waste problem is nothing new for Lebanon. In 2015, the first waste crisis began after years of resilience from the people of Beirut. The government closed the country's biggest waste dump without coming up with an alternative plan, and as a result, waste flooded the streets of the capital and eight months of protest ensued, mainly targeting the government's bad management. An organization called You Stink saw the light of day, and Claude Jaber is still a member. It's not a logistical problem, it's a political one. Recycling only represents 10 to 20 percent of the issue. It's a matter of corruption. In Lebanon, politicians want to get richer, sign contracts and increase their businesses. Today, there are only two landfills for 4.5 million residents, a very centralized way of managing waste. Before the crisis, the city of Beit Mary near Beirut would dump its waste into these valleys. 9,000 tons of waste remains today, and it took a lawsuit to end the practice and sign a contract with this recycling company. We don't throw anything away or send anything to the landfills, and we don't burn anything. Zayed Abi Shakir is an engineer and an environmental activist. He's developed a system that encourages recycling directly at the source. It's a pilot project for now, and he works with two local authorities that pay him 65 euros per ton of waste. So there's nothing to replace a, a good hand with a, with a knife. Nine employees tear through 16 tons of rubbish bags each day. Once it's been recycled, the food waste is turned into compost, the plastic is crushed, and the other materials are used to create green panels like these. The structure is very simple. It's in 3D with a width of 20 centimeters. We fill it up with earth as well as with the compost that we produce. And we plant seeds to create this green barrier. Imagine what Beirut would look like if we could use each plastic bag to create green panels. We could cover the ugliness of concrete in cities and industrial areas without having to burn them and breathe in their carcinogenic fumes. The burning of waste, the preferred method for the government, has become a new key issue for environmental activists. For the first time, Human Rights Watch has published a public health report. So what we found is that um, we looked at one part of the garbage crisis, which is open burning of waste, which is a dangerous, uh, avoidable practice that can, has been linked to cancer, has been linked to heart disease, to respiratory illnesses, to skin conditions. Um, and we found that the open burning of waste at 150 uh, dumps every week across Lebanon, um, by failing to stop the burning and, or failing to inform people of their rights, the government is actually violating their obligations under international human rights law.
In January, strong winds caused the beaches of Beirut to be littered once again. The government has yet to offer a general scrapping plan and is considering increasing the size of the two existing landfills. And yet, the clock is ticking. Every minute, the equivalent of one truck filled with waste is dumped into the Mediterranean Sea. Let's go to a break. I'll be back at the top of the hour with a full news roundup. Don't go away.